Hey guys, Dylan here for ProductionCrate.com. Since it's been a while since we last talked, I figured we could do something special, move away from the effects talk, and discuss ways to speed up the editing process. Namely, what perhaps is the most overlooked part of anyone's workflow, the keyboard shortcut. You know those little buttons you learn how to use in school to write up book reports on Mark Twain and the Bay of Pigs? Well, these same buttons can be used to cut your work time in half while cutting together your next movie. I've been editing for years, but I'd be lying if I said I was always efficient at it. I'd estimate the first two years or so of the time I spent editing video looked a lot like this. And back then I would justify this kind of crap with a sense of false content. Oh, I'm perfectly happy without using keyboard shortcuts. Those are just for try-hard students who are depressingly good at Microsoft Excel and major in banking and astrophysics. I don't really need them. Yellow? Yeah, hey dude. You're a f***ing idiot. There are literally dozens of keyboard shortcuts that professional editors use every time they open a project. So many, in fact, that it might be a little overwhelming for less seasoned specimens. So, allow me to demonstrate some of the shortcuts I find myself using the most when I'm working. I'll start with what is undoubtedly the most important one of them all. Saving. Saving. The earlier a person has this concept hammered and hardwired into their brain, the earlier this becomes the most constant and unhealthy looking of habits, the better off in life you're gonna be. There is nothing worse than doing minutes, even hours of intense work, only for Murphy's Law to crash your software or kill your battery or restart your computer for no frickin' reason at all, forcing you to do it all over again. If I'm coming off as a little agitated, it's because it's happened to me probably dozens of times. It is not fun. And while there are options within Premiere for automatic saving, in my experience even these can prove to be a little unreliable. So it's best to just do things the old-fashioned way and make absolutely sure yourself that nothing too catastrophic will happen to your project. Saving. Saving. On the opposite side of that is deleting, or backspace. Kind of obvious, but better to inform you of its use rather than letting you resort to right-clicking for it every time like I did starting out. It wasted a lot of time. Being able to instantly undo your last move, or your last several if you goofed up big time, is a huge relief. And if you want to ponder whether or not an editing choice will do the job, you can redo it just by adding the shift key to the mix. Move back and forth between your progress until you decide what your next move should be. You can move between edit points using the up and down keys, while also being able to go frame by frame with left and right. Simple. Useful. Let's move on. The Razor tool allows you to splice your footage into individual segments, whether it's for deleting unwanted chunks or for applying effects to only select parts of the video. So if you want to separate a majority of your footage or a mere couple of frames, this is the tool to use. Speaking of single key tools, R allows you to speed up and slow down footage on the fly, sidestepping the need to use that box every time you want to adjust the rate of playback for a specific clip. Still, if you want to keep the rate change consistent, or just want to enable or disable the pitch shift, you can always get to those details with the right click. Reverse, pause, and forward. Scrub through your media at ease while being able to speed up and slow down by hitting J or L multiple times which admittedly will distract you if you let it. Here's a subtle one. If the primary volume adjuster just isn't cutting it, you can go into Eclipse Gain Control and make it louder or softer. Surprisingly, this is a more recent one I've started using, and if you're getting some not-so-consistent audio, it helps in making things right. Plagiarists already know and love this one. You can copy a piece of media and paste it somewhere else on the timeline. So if you want carbon copies of a clip and all of the effects work you might have done to it, it's right there waiting for you. An additional really cool feature is the ability to paste the attributes of a clip to a completely different one, whether it's motion, brightness, or filters. And last, but certainly not least, saving. I can't stress this one enough, people. Now again, memorizing all these might be a little taxing at first, but the more you practice using them, the more second nature they're going to be. And if you guys have any shortcuts you use time and again, be sure to share it with us in the comments below. Well, that's pretty much all I got for you today, guys. As usual, be sure to check back regularly to Footage Crate, Sounds Crate, and Production Crate for the latest updates. The easiest way to keep up to date on the latest effects and sounds is through our Facebook page. So if you haven't already, go over there and like it. Thanks for all the support you guys have given us over the years. We had a good bit of growth last year, and 2016 is going to be no different. And so, till we talk again, guys, peace.